Okay. Yeah, I want to go over a little bit what we did last time and then and then move on. Um, I spend a lot of my time in, in preparation for things that I end up not doing with you. <laughs> Um, but I, I have been thinking about this that there, so here, you know, here and there, there are particular sugyot in the Gemara that I think it would be worth us doing. Today, I think we're just going to press on in the, in the Gemara. And I keep promising to go back to certain topics. So I think those topics, I will do select uh, sugyot in the Gemara so that we understand them better. Uh, but for this one, I, I want to go back and reread the Mishnah here, and I want to show you a couple of things, and then we'll go on. Okay, so let's go back to the beginning of uh, the chapter, Shnei Sirei Yom HaKippurim. So we're talking, now af we're talking now after the sprinkling of the blood, the various iterations of the sprinkling of the blood of the par of the Kohen and the seer of the Am, which was done in the Kodesh HaKodeshim, and then Neged HaParochet in the Kodesh, and then on the Mizbeach. And so now uh, we come to the part where we're going to do the uh, seer la Azazel. So here, as we mentioned before, the mission is going to digress for a bit and tell us more about the Sirei Yom Kippurim. So it says, Shnei Sirei Yom Kippurim mitzvatan shiyu shnehen shavim b'mar'eh uvukoma uvudamim uvulukichatan ke'echad. Right, so the, they're both the same. Both of the goats are the same in appearance in height and in value and in purchasing them as one. And even if they are not, in other words, even if they turned out to not be the same uh, or equal in these regards, they're still kosher. Uh, so here I'll just I'll point out that the Gemara here has very interesting sugya where it goes and lists other there are other instances like this, uh, where the, where a korban has to be brought, let's say, with two of the same animal, and they make similar drashot, like the korban of the tarat of, uh, of the tzora. He also has to bring two kvasim. And there also there's a discussion that it has to be that it should be like two kvasim that are the same. But if they're not exactly the same, it's okay. And the limud, the derech of the limud is very similar. And uh, we'll go over it again at the part two, just to remind us. Okay, l'kach echad hayam v'yachad l'machag sheri. So if he took one today, he bought one today, and bought one the next day, they're kosher, right? So that's the modification of l'kichatan. Uh, right, so even if you didn't buy them at once, they're still kosher. So this was the main thing that we were focusing on. What if one of them dies? What if one of them dies? So if one died, one of the two seirim, one of either the seir lazazel or the seir lachatat died, before the Hagrada. So we don't know, um, we don't know which is which. So then he just takes a, uh, a zug for the second one. So this word zug here, so this is what uh, we, you know, I was tripping up on. The, the meaning seems to change, right? Because here, Yikach Zug Lasheni, what does the word Zug here mean? What is he getting for the second one? So one died, one is left. Now he gets a Zug for the second one, for the one that's left. So what does Zug mean here? I, I think it means partner. Right. So it would be like we would say, a ben zug, 
right? In other words, you it would be a partner or another another one to fill out the pair. Be real mates, and if one of the sirim died after the hagrala, yavizug acher viagril alehe batchila. So then he brings another zug, and he does the hagrala from the beginning. So what does zug mean here? A pair. Here it means a pair. So in the in the Yerushalmi, and also here, in one of the nice things I have here on uh, Al HaTorah, they have the Mishnah according to Ktav Yad Kaufman, which is, I think it's the earliest complete manuscript we have of the Mishnah that goes back to around the 11th or 12th century. It's also Minukad, and it reflects the uh, tradition from Eretz Yisrael. And here, notice the change in language. Right? It says, uh, so it's a zog instead of zug, but that's the, the same. The imisha he grill mate. If if one of them died after the hagrala, here it says yavi shnaim viagrila alehem katchila. You bring two. So the that nusach is much more clear. It doesn't change the meaning of the word zug. Toch kedei. So I, I thought that was interesting, worth pointing out. And if you look at the Rishalmi here, this is essentially the the gears of the Rishalmi, <clears throat> which would be the gears of Amirat Israel. Um, okay, so Yavizugachevi agreed on him, but Chima Omar, and he says, "Im shel shem met." Uh, one second. Let's see if I could find this. So when I was laying this out for the sheets that I like to make, even though I haven't been keeping up with them as much as I like. I'll show you how I laid this out to make it easier to, to understand. If I could find it, Mishnah uh, Yoma. Oof. Okay, I won't. I won't take the time. No, I can't find it. the way. The way this should be laid out. Actually, I can just do it on the spot. It'll just make it easier. I think for us to follow the Mishnah. Okay, you see the uh, you see the sheets uh, that I made now. Yes. Okay. Good. Oh, here's Paul. This is the part that I wanted to, to do. It's just, I think it's easier 
to understand that the way the Mishnah should be laid out is something more like this. Hi, Paul. We're just we're doing some review from last time. Um, this this we could do even something like uh, oops, something like this. I did it a different way, but so here's the thing. This is what happens. So if the if the we had two C rim and then that we chose, and then one was supposed to be the Chatat, and one was supposed to be Azazel, and then so the Mishnah says, so if one of them dies before the Hagrala, so they haven't yet been chosen which one is which. So there the solution is simple. You take a partner for the one that remained, and then, and then you do the Hagrala. Right, so you had you had two Syrian, you lost one. You didn't know that one was going to be Azazel and one was going to be Lashem, so you just take another one and then you do Lagrala, and then that determines. So im Mishahi Gril mate, if if the if one of them died after the Hagrala, Batila. <coughs> Bring another pair, or Paul. We just I just showed that in other nuschot of the Mishnah, instead of saying Yavi Zug, it says Yavi Shnayim, to make it clear that this the meaning of Zug here doesn't mean the same as it does here. So you bring two others, Viagrila Lehem Batchila, and you do the Hagrala from the beginning, Viomar, and so you say, and I put this in kind of brackets to say. This isn't what you say. What's in brackets is in the Mishnah, but it's the it's the uh, introduction. It's like the heading. This is what you say. It would be like uh, a or Aleph im shel shem met. If the one that died was shel shem, this is what you say. Right, so in, in other words, it's simple. Um, you had two seirim. Or I shouldn't say it's simple, but <laughs> you had two seirim. What? And now we're saying if the one sh- and you did the hagrala and the seir that was lashem died. So now you bring two more seirim, and you do a hagrala. Left, you do the Hagrala all over again. So then one of them will now be Lashem. The one that you have from the first Hagrala was Azazel. So now you do the, this new Hagrala. The new one is Lashem. The new one that's Lashem. What you say is, So you say, now with this new Hagrala, the one upon whom the Goral Lashem fell, that's going to be now in place of the of the one that died. And if and then the uh, then the other possibility is you had done the Hagrala and then the Sir La Azazel died. So Im Shal Azazel mate, this is what. Now that I've done a new Hagala with two new Seirim, uh, the, the one upon whom Azazel fell, that will now be the Seir Azazel, and it will be used now in place of the one that died. And the second one has to go out to pasture until it gets uh, a blemish. And then it will be sold, and its value that you get from the sale is going to go to Anidava, uh, to a voluntary korban for the tzibur. And the reason is, she'en chatat tzibur meita. The reason that it's your 
and it doesn't, it's not, meta doesn't die, which we described last time, means that we actually cause it to die by locking it away and letting it starve to death. And the reason is, shen chatat sibur meta, because chatat sibur does, doesn't die like that. I'll talk a little bit more about that today. Rabbi Yudon Meres took Tamut, Rabbi Yudon says, no, it, it, it dies. Uh, so one of the questions that was raised last time, right, so this is, so this is what we had. We have the, the case where we had two Sirim, we did the Hagrala, we knew which one was Lashem, which one was Azazel, and then one of them died. And so this part of the Mishnah tells us what to do uh, in that instance. In that instance, you bring another Zug, you do the Hagrala all over again, and then the one that um, the one that is chosen. Uh, that would that the the one that's chosen that that to take the that that it, bleh, the one that will now take the place of the one that died is going to be chosen from the zug, and then it will join the first one. And here the word sheni would seem then to refer to the second seir from the second Hagrala. And that Seir is going to be Yirea Chistaev, and then uh, eventually it can be sold. And Rabbi, uh, and Rabbi Yehuda says, no, it's Tamut, it dies. So we'll come back to that. Okay, but well, so the reason I did this is just so you understand. This is the this is how to read the Mishnah. In other words, otherwise you might make a mistake and read the Mishnah saying that it's saying some kind. It's trying to make some kind of a uh, conditional statement that if if the Shall shame die, then X, and in, in, in shall Azazel made, then Y, and it's all like one statement, but it, that's not the case. What what this contrasts with? Just a second. We're back here. This contrasts with other. There are other examples where. The language sounds similar, and it's actually it's a conditional statement to it, it, well that but they're both are all conditional statements. But the question is, are we, am I making a conditional statement to account for a suffix? In, in other words, if there would be a suffix about which one was which then you would make a statement, if this is X, then, then blah. And if this is Y, then blah. Um, I think I can bring up another case here. If I can find it quickly. Shell? Yes. So what I understand is that the ikaron, the, the principle is that the seir must be the result of a lottery. It can't, you can't just take it. Even if one is uh, lost, then you have to, to do again a lottery for, for that new, uh, new seir. Yes, this is, this is, this is exactly correct. Uh, and this is what we had emphasized 
uh, previously when we were talking about it, that uh, that they we talked about this this idea when we looked at the Ramban, who gave more a little more conceptual background, that these sirim are not to be chosen by us per se. In other words, the most we do is we choose two sirim, but then between the two, kviyachol the Kadesh Baruch Hu chooses because we don't want it to look at all like we are giving, according to the way the Ramban understood, that we're giving some kind of a sacrifice, la azazel, right? We're not, we, that, this, is, this, is a, a, this is a very important, as you say, ikarov, it's a very important principle here. Um, I should have brought this up before, but, All right, you know what? I, I, well, I I'm sorry. I didn't I, I, I didn't bring this up. The, the this the idea here is that the what I'm trying to point out about the language is that there are other cases where there's a suffake in front of us, and I don't know if this animal is X, so I don't know if it's Y. And so I say, if it is X, then then I do this, and if it is Y, then I do this. And here I'm not saying that. Here there's actually no suffix involved. There's no suffix involved. I had two sirim. One was Lashem. One was, one was Lazazel. One of them died. Now I'm going to bring two more sirim. Once I do a Hagrala, I know now from the, from the second pair, I know that one is Lashem and one is Lazazel. So... I'm not going to make a declaration if this one is Lashem. That's not part of the declaration. That's the Mishnah telling me what to do if the first one that died was Lashem. Then you say this one that I now chose, Lashem, is going to come in its place. And the same thing if it's Lazazel. Okay, that's just to clarify the language. But we'll see in other instances, there, there's a language that would start where the language itself includes the words, im ze shell blank, or im ze shell y. That's part of the language. But here, that's the reason I, when I uh, made my own version, why I put this language of im shell shame met. That's not something he says. He only says, There is no suffix. Okay? I hope that's clear. Um, this question about the Chatat uh, Meita, I just want to show you the source for that, the Mishnah, comes from here in Masechet Murah. So, you know, Tzmura deals, deals with, the Torah itself starts to deal with these questions, right? The, at the end of Vayikra, we have Prashat uh, Tzmura. There's a Misur that you're not allowed to, once, once you're Makdish, an animal, to be a Korban, once you've dedicated an animal to be a Korban, you can't decide that you want to exchange it for a different one whether to make it a better, you know, like a, a higher quality animal or a lower quality animal, you're not allowed to do that. That's the, that's the Isur of Tzmura. And if you do, they're actually both Kadosh. So the Torah, is, as it were, kind of, kind of finds you. In, in this context, in uh, Masechet Tzmura, um, uh, it brings this question of chatat mate. This is not actually a, 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 a tmura per se, but it, it, it fits into the context of the Masafa. So here in Mishnah Tmura Perek Bet, uh, uh, Mishnah Bet, it says, chatat yachid shikipru v'alav meitot. So what's this? Somebody had to bring a korban chatat. A particular, you know, a, an individual had to bring a korban chatat. And before he could bring, before he could bring it, 
he lost it, right? The Bartunu explains. He lost the original chatat. So he had to bring it, but he still had to bring a chatat. So he went, he bought another animal, and he brought that as the korbat chatat. And then the first one is found. So now the question is, what do you do with that first one? Because he already fulfilled his obligation in terms of bringing a korban chatat. <coughs> so you can't stop bringing, you, you can't be, you can't bring a korban chatat as a nidava. Um, so what's the din? Metot, they die. And what it means is that they, they, they die, it means that they are put into like a, 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 a confined space and they're left to die. Bishal tzibur einan metot. But if this happened to a chatat of, of the tzibur, where the tzibur had to bring a korban chatat and the first one got lost and so they brought in another one and then they found the first one, they don't die. And Rabbi Yehuda says, Yamutu. Rabbi Yehuda says that they do die. <clears throat> so here the Bartanur explains, the Shal Tzibur Shekipru right? If it was a Korban Chatat of the Tzibur and they ended up getting Kapara from another animal, the first one was lost, then the first, then the first one, once it's found again, a non metot. It doesn't, they, they don't die. So he explains the chata'ot ha-metot ha This is not a din that we find written in the Torah. It is a din diorita as an, an oral tradition from Moshe from Sinai. Musvira le tanakama del yachid gemire velo l'shal tzibur. So the tanakama holds that the halacha ha-moshe Sinai is that chatat hayachid shekipru ba'alav meit, but chatat ha-tzibur shekipru ba'alav ena meita, doesn't die. And Rabbi Yehuda disagrees with the Tanakam, and he says, in any event, a chatat that had been lost in the ba'alim or mitkaper, ben yachid, ben tzibur, the, the, chat, the original korban that was supposed to be a chatat is made. And so we see the parallel in our Mishnah. Let's go back to, we go back to here. So Zesh, in our Mishnah, what happens to the, what happens to the Seir, that was chosen in the second Hagrala that we don't need. So it's it's it, it's it's like a chatat shekipru ba'alav. Both the korban, both the one that we say is Lashem and the one that's lazazel are. Both have, for certain purposes, they are, they, even the one Lazazel is like a chatat. Even though we don't bring it in the, in the, we don't bring it as a korban chatat, al-hamizbeach, but it has a certain din of chatat. And here, so even if it was the seir Lazazel <coughs> from the second hagrala that we don't need, it has now this status that's comparable to a chatat of the of the tzibur that shenit kapru ba'alav ba'acher, right? So it's just, it, because it, we're going to use the sil azazel from the original hagrola and not the second one. So the Tanakhama says, Hasheni yire ad shi yista'ev, yimachev yipu damav yidava. 
So this is what happens when you have a korban that you can't use. Generally, you let it go out to pasture until it gets a moon. So now it's no longer fit to be brought as a korban. And you sell it, and then you take the money itself as kadosh, and then you you bring a you 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 bring a korban nedava with it for the tzibur. And Rabbi Yehuda says, Tamut, no, the second seer should die. It will, in other words, the din is that it will die in this kind of uh, benign but somewhat horrific way, <laughs> not to put too much of a spin on it, uh, where you just let it starve to death. Because as we saw, it, this is the shita of Rabbi Yehuda, this is how he holds that a chatat hatzibur then the original chatat is meta. So that's that's the machloket that we see here. It's the same one as we saw in the Mishnah and Tzmura. So, so you let him die, the, this uh, Seir, just, yeah. it, it doesn't give, give, give it to either. <laughs> yeah. If you do a sacrifice, you can understand, you, you just uh, you kill the animal, you, even if you eat it, you, you shared it, yes? But here you do something much worse with the, with the animal. Like I say, in a way, right, in other words, it's, it's, it's a sheva alta ase, in other words, you don't, you don't uh, kill it with your hands, but I agree, like that's why I say, it's, it's benign but horrific. Uh, it's benign in the sense that you don't do you don't actively do anything to kill it, but uh, you know to give my own judgmental view on it, it's a little bit horrific. The and, and you see, we saw from the Bartunura and Tumura, it's halachala Meshemi Sinai. It was there was a specific tradition about this particular animal. That, that what's the particular that it's. It's a chatat that nitkapru ba'alav ba'acher, right? So it's a chatat. It originally was supposed to be brought as a korban chatat. And yes, in terms of what we, you know, if we want to impose, uh, you know, our, I don't know if it's an imposition, but okay, if we, if we, if we understand this in terms of uh, the humanity of it, then yes, I think it's very clear that we would say there's a very big difference between shechting an animal where the animal dies almost instantly. And actually this came up, this uh, question of animal suffering came up at a Shabbos meal that Michael Werner was at. I, what I, <laughs> and I'll add something that I, I wanted to say then because I think I got a little off topic then. You know, when an animal is shechted, even though it doesn't die instantly, but if it's shechted kosher, I believe it's safe to say it doesn't actually feel anything because the the uh, the knife that's used for shechita is extremely smooth, right? It has to be perfectly smooth. It can't have any nicks in it. You slice through the animal's uh, uh, jugular vein and windpipe. So the animal wouldn't feel the cut. Just like if you, you know, it's like if you get a cut, if, you were, if you've ever had this experience of being cut with an extremely sharp blade, you don't feel the cut. And I know because it's happened to me. You'll feel it in a moment. You'll feel it a moment later when the blood starts gushing out. That you'll start to feel. But it's, it's it would be different if you were cut with a serrated blade. A serrated blade, you feel the pain of the cut. Anyway, this is a bit of a digression, but I think this is one of the points that, that we should make maybe about shrita. When shrita is done properly, and as Michael Werner pointed out, if there are no other things that are done to restrain the animal in an inhumane way. Uh, he didn't point it out here, but he pointed it out at the Shabbos table that, that he was at. Um, if, 
that then the animal will die. I would, I would guess, I would make an educated guess that the, the animal will die painlessly or relatively painlessly. Right? Because by the time it may start to feel that it's been cut, the lifeblood is already going to be out of it. Right? You have to, and when you do a kosher shrita, you have to do, uh, you have to cut most of the jugular and most of the windpipe. I think practically the shokh team cut it completely, but min handin, it's enough to do most. You have to do more than half. So all that to say, when you shecht an animal, the animal will die painlessly or relatively painlessly. And here, to put the animal in a confined space and let it starve to death seems particularly cruel. Uh, there is another problem. When, when, when this animal dies like this, it is uh, tame. But if you do shkita, it will not be tame because you can. Uh, this is uh, this meat you can eat it. Yeah. So that's the thing. What what what. What the so let's leave aside a moment for a moment uh, the humanity or inhumanity of what's uh, what's happening, but yes, you're making an important point. The point is that an animal, right? So we're talking now about three possible three possible ways for what ha three three possible things that happens to an animal that has been designated to be, to be a chatat, particularly a chatat. So the chatchila, if, if you designate an animal to, animal to be a korban chatat, then the chatchila, what you're supposed to do is bring it as a korban, right? So it gets shchita, and as Paul points out, then it's tahor, and uh, we know some of the meat is going to be eaten eaten by uh, zichrei kuhuna, right? That's, that's its din. If it's a korban chatat, um, oh, I said three, there's really only two, because I'm thinking that the, the other one isn't, uh, oh, no, no, there's three. So the other, the other possibility is it was a chatat yachid that was designated, it got lost, so another chatat was brought in its place. And now you find it, when you find the original one, it's meta. You have to, you have to uh, put it in confinement, let it starve to death. And as Paul points out, when it dies, it's now a nevela. So you can't eat it. Uh, the only deen that it would have would be, uh, I think you could be nehenet, right? Because the din of the nevela stam is the keruv tashlichu uh, That's what the that's what the Torah says, and what we understand from that is that um, you know if you can feed your dog with it, that means that you can derive benefit from it, but you can't eat it. So it means that you could sell it, you could sell the meat to a non-Jew, you could use the meat for some other purpose, you can use the skin. But it died in this kind of uh, cruel way. And then the third possibility is, according to the Tanakama, if you find, if it's a korban chatat of the tzibur that was replaced with another one, then when you find the original one, it's your e'achi sta'ev. Then you let it, in other words, you don't let it die uh, by starving, you can just let it go out to pasture. And we know eventually it's going to get a moon. And once it gets a moon, then you can sell it. And then whoever buys it does whatever they'll do with it. So those are the three possibilities. So it's an interesting thing that the idea, the, the chatat meta <coughs> of the, uh, when it's a chatat yachid that's replaced by another one, we find the original one, that's meta. It's halacha l'moshem Sinai. We don't know the reason for it. I think we can conjecture there's, some, there, there's something symbolic about the korban chatat in particular that, uh, that once 
the animal had been designated to be, to be a korban chatat, it, it's going, it, and if, if it can't be brought as a chatat, it dies in this particular way. I don't have a specific conjecture about why, but I think it's something worth, uh, something worth thinking about. I did try to find, I'm sure there are perushim on it. I didn't find anything. I was looking to see if someone commented and gave a conceptual reason for this halacha la Sinai. But the nature of halacha la Sinai is that we don't know the reason. It's simply halacha la Sinai. So, ani lo yodea. I mean, it occurs to me that this does say something um, how would I put this? It says something about meat eating, about sort of the, that sort of the meat eating and sacrifice that um, and I, I mean that well, can, how can I put this? The um, the fact, the fact that we don't meet, that we don't eat the animal, that we can't meet, uh, eat the animal, makes it. Well, you know what? I, actually, I don't, I don't want to go there. Do you know what? Uh, I'm I'm going to try to say something more about this next time, Michael. I have a feeling that you and I, maybe all of us, have some sense of the connection here. But it, I, I, I can't articulate anything right now, and I'm not, so I'm not going to try. But Michael, if you, if you think about it during the week, maybe next week when we meet again, I may try to bring this up again, even just briefly, and we'll see if we can say something more about it. But let's go back now to the end of the Mishnah. Okay. Odama um, Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yehuda said further, Nishpach Adam Yamuta Mishtaleach. If the blood spilled, then the Sir Mishtaleach will die. In other words, it will be also like a Chatat Meta. So what, what blood are we talking about? What blood, if what blood spills, if what blood spills, will the, will the din of the Shetir Mishtalech change from being sent away to being a meta? That's what it means, Yamuta Mishtalech. It doesn't mean simply that the Mishtalech will die because the Mishtalech always dies. Right, eventually it gets pushed off a cliff and dies. But that's not what it means here. We see now in this context, it's a continuation. The Oda Mar Rabbi Huda, just like Rabbi Huda said that a chatat atzibur is meta, he says that if mishpach adam, then the sira mishtalech is also a meta, is also a mate. It's a chatat meta. <clears throat> so if what blood spilled, so the, the, the blood of the seer Hatsipur, um, for the Hatat Hatsipur. So if the blood of the seer that was Lashem spilled, and when did it spill? And presumably when it's being brought into the Hecha. Well, it, right, or at some point prior to having done all of the sprinkling, right? In other words, if the blood spilled, before all of the sprinkling that was needed to be done was done, if that blood spills, then yamuta mishtaleach. So let, actually, let's just focus on that for a moment. So why, why is that? What's the din? What's the din uh, if the blood spills, if the blood of the seir hatlech, uh, Chatat spills before we finish the sprinkling. What do we do in that instance? Uh, we need to. We, 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 will, we will need to do another 
korban, and we'll, 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 we'll need to do another korban chatat, which, and, and since the korban chatat has to be designated by lots, then we'd have to bring an entirely new pair, one of which would be designated the Shem, the other one for the Azazel. Very good. Right, we said this at the in the previous mission at the end of Mishnah. Hey, we talked about this question because uh, it said Komasa Yom Kippurim Amur Al Seder Ibikti Masel Chaveiro Lo Asachlum and so forth. And then it said Ibikti Namazim Im Ad Shelo Gamar Ta Matanot Shebifnim Nishpach Hadam. If the matanot, in other words, if the blood that's being sprinkled inside wasn't finished before the blood spilled, yavi dam acher, he has to bring other blood. And we explain what it means is that he has to bring another seir. And like you're saying now, that means you actually have to bring two seirim. So then what happens to the, if nishpach adam, so we mean, so it's clear that the, the, it's the dam of the seir that's Lashem. And so what we have left is the seir hamishtaleach. So now, once again, the seir, this seir hamishtaleach is going to be replaced. So it becomes like a, uh, a chatat meita. Uh, it, beca- it becomes like a, I'm sorry, it becomes like a chatat she nitkapu ba'ala ba'acher, right? Even though, so, so what, so according to Rabbi Huda, it's meta, but we might have thought there's another possibility, right? In other words, what we said, what we said at the beginning of the Mishnah, what we said at the beginning of the Mishnah is, Right. If one of the, if let's say in this case, uh, the seir lechatat died after the hagrala, but before the blood was brought, then the din is we bring a zug sheni, we do the hagrala again, and then we pick a new. Uh, Sir Lashem, and according to the Tanakama, we take the um, Sir Hamishtalech from the first Zug, and the the Sir Hamishtalech from the second Zug is Yireh Adshi and according to Rabbi Huda, it's Meita. According to Rabbi Huda, it's Meita. So here also, in a similar vein, Rabbi Huda is essentially saying the same thing, that even if the the chatat, the korban lashem, didn't die before the blood was brought, but it, but it, it was slaughtered properly, and the blood was, blood was brought, but not all of the blood was brought. It was nishpach adam. Either none of the blood was brought or only some of the blood was brought. He's saying it has the same din as what I said before, where the, the it's ben zug is going to be um, meta. That's, that's Rabbi Yehuda's shita. Really? Yes. A physicist would say that the two serim are correlated. Yes. I uh, yes, another. I I I I was thinking about that. Right? They, it's as if they become um, uh, inherently attached. So if you can't have one without the other, and it goes back to the point that you raised at the beginning, which is the hagrala is essential for for choosing these animals. So if you don't have one or the other animal before its whole procedure is done, then you don't have anything. It's as if you don't have anything. So what happens to the one that's that's alive before, you know, the other, the other one 
is gone and I have one that's alive, but its procedure has now been fouled up, it's, it's essentially lost in this world. It doesn't have its, it doesn't have its zoo. It doesn't have its, uh, its other part. And I think all of this points back to this most basic point, which is that the Hagrala is essential because we're, we're saying that it's up to the Kaddish Baruch Hu to make this choice. We don't get to make the choice. So by the same token, if the blood spilled, or if the seer, let's say the seer la Shem die, uh, died before even it, it, any of the blood was brought, of course, that's also a Shem's choice. We don't know why, right? In other words, if an animal dies, it's not, uh, you know, if it dies suddenly, it has a heart attack or a brick falls on it or mashaloyi, <laughs> yeah. We don't know. Uh, that's also Hashem's choice. And then it's saying that, okay, this is, this is what it is. You know, it has to be done again. If there were quantum mechanical objects, it would say that they are entangled. Entangled? I was thinking of, uh, right, I was thinking of this idea of, uh, you know, uh, particles, right? The, right, the, the particles that can be whatever, thousands of miles apart, but they have, but they are, would you also, is that also called entanglement? Yes, yeah. if the, the measurement of one of the particles depends on the measure, measurement of the other one, then they are called entangled. So, the, so here we have entangled CE I, I Okay, I'm not quantum mechanic. That's <laughs> <laughs> too big. I'm thinking Shakespeare might have called, called, called them star-crossed. <laughs> Michael, where, I'm, I'm, do you want I'm to say actually, something? I'm actually thinking about some of the Midrashim about, um, you know, about Yaakov, about Yaakov and Yosef in this, you know, in the, in the oh, last yes, week, Parsha, this week, Parsha, where, you know, Yosef is in Egypt, Yaakov, you know, Yaakov, thinks that he's dead, but then has like, there's some Ruach HaKosh, there's something sparking in that makes him that he's not dead. So, so some, so, some stuff, you know, Yaakov is both in life and not in life. And likewise, you know, Yosef is kind of socially dead, but not physically dead. And so there's this kind of, like they're, 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 they're so- I agree. Numbers. No, I agree, I agree. Uh, uh, right, Ela told us Yaakov Yosef, right? That's the, and the Rashi brings just the beginning of the Medrash, but if you look in Medrash Rabba there, that the Drasha is, right? So there's the, the Pshat is Ela told us Yaakov Nekuda time, right? Then it's a colon, Yosef, Ayah Ben Shmas, Reshana, and so forth. But the Medrash says, Ela toldot Yaakov Yosef. The, 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 these are the toldot of Yaakov Yosef. In other words, Yosef's history was the same as Yaakov's history. They both had a brother that hated them, that wanted to kill them. In, other words, in, ya in Yosef's case, it was many brothers. And both of them went to, you know, there's, there's, there's a whole list of parallels. And yes, this whole idea, which now you know we see in what it says, Vayechi uh, Yaakov, or actually before the end of Parashat Vayigash, Vatchi um, Ruach uh, Yaakov. Uh, when Yaakov sees the Agalot and he realizes that the brothers, that his sons are telling him the truth, that Yosef is still alive, it says that his, his, um, spirit comes alive, <clears throat> it reflects on the fact that all the time that he thought that ya Yosef was dead, he was in this kind of limbo. He wasn't dead and he wasn't alive, just like you say, in, in the sense that, that was parallel to Yosef's own situation. And then, also think go ahead. I was also thinking of the Midrash in which you win, when, when, you, when Yaakov says, you know, was it, um, is it Toref Toraf? Toref Toraf. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, I I, I can never. That's okay. Uh, uh, he's actually he he's actually has some into even though he thinks that Yosef is dead, he has some intimation of Potiphar's wife. Um, oh, that much. Yeah, that. Uh huh. Uh huh. 
Right, but also even in pshat, in other words, the pshat is he does he doesn't say the words that Yosef died. He says Tarof Taraf Yosef, and later on he says uh, Yosef Enenu. He isn't. And he doesn't want to say that Yosef, he never speaks the words that Yosef died. Right, Paul, I think you're shaking your head because, you know, we see on Kruzim now for people when they pass away, it says so-and-so enenu. But it's a, it's, it's a I, I'm, I'm not saying that that's what you're thinking, but I'm just saying it, it's, uh, it's uh, you know, lashon saginahor. And if you understand, it means that, it's, that it, the person is dead when you say enenu. Uh, Yaakov lo hotzi bisvatav et amilim Yosef met. And and we that, okay, it's part of a longer thing which which Michael is, has 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 uh, well touched on. So I guess to bring it back to our Mishnah, though the the point is that yes, these two seirim are intimately tied one with the other. And so back to what Rabbi Yehuda is saying. So if the blood of the seir lachatat spilled before all of the matanot. So then we'll have to bring another si'ir l'chatat, in which case I also have to choose an, another si'ir l'chatat. So this si'ir l'chatat is yamut. What about the other way? Meta mishtalech yishafech adam. So what does that mean? What it, what's the situation here? When did the mishtalech? When did the mishtalech die? I mean, be, between the between the between the destination, between the drawing of the lots, and the shita. No, if wait, you, you know, if if the. If it was before the Shrita. I should have it before the Shrita. Say it again. If it died. No, wait a second. This, this doesn't make. So, no, it's, it's just the other way. In other words, if the Mishtaleach died, so it would be, of course, it's after the Hagrala. Both the, it's, it's before the Ishaiti takes him to the to the desert. It's before, but it's before he takes right. So the Mishtalech dies before he's taken to the desert. Yishafech Adam. So what blood should now be spilled? It's the other uh, the other seer before it's before the sprinkling. Before the sprinkling. <laughs> Right. In other words, it's it's just right. It's the it's the complement of the first case that if the in the first case the this the there was the hagrala the seirim were chosen the seir the 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 seir lashem was shechted as a korban chatat and then the blood spilled either at the beginning or the middle or sometime before all of the blood needed to be sprinkled the blood spilled. So here, in that case, so in that case, yamuta mishtalech, according to Rabbi Yehuda, but meta mishtalech, meaning that the mishtalech, the seir la'azazel, died prior to the blood of the seir la'ashem having entirely been sprinkled. Then it's yishafech adam. Then you pour out the blood because why? Because you're gonna have, again, because you have to pick two new seirim. Meta mishtarech yishafech adam. One second, something I wanted to add there. Yes, because if, if meta mishtarech, before the, before the, um, Sir Lashem was shechted, that's the subject of the Mishnah earlier. Right? If either one of the animals died after the Hagrala, then you bring another Zug, the Agril Lahem Batfila. 
So here, meta mishtarech yishafech adam. So we're we're still going to have to do another hagrava, but instead, but it, but now because this sier Shem was already shechted, I can no longer use the uh, the sier mishtarech. It's unusable. That's again. It's according to Rabbi Yehuda. Um, in the last part of the minute, let's let's just take a moment now and look again at the Bartanura. and put some of these things back in order. So. Okay, so we did all this last time. Let's do it again. Shnei Seirei Yom HaKippurim. Mitzvotan shiyu shnei hen shavim b'marev v'koma v'damim v'lekichatan ke'achad. So the Bartonu explains shnei Seirei b'marev. What does it mean that they have to look the same? Shnei hem levanim or shnei hem shkorim. They have the same coloring. V'koma v'damim and in height and in value. And the basis for this is that there are three psukim. Tata krai ktive, umeet adat ben esri yikach shnei sirim, velakach et shnei hasirim, venatan aron al shnei hasirim. Vekevan de sirim tre mashma. In other words, sirim itself is a plural form. So in principle, the Torah never had to say shnei sirim. All it would have to say is sirim. Right? This is a general rule in in, uh, in uh, Parshanut that we understand that the minimum plural was two, and unless the Torah expressly talks about more than two, we understand that a plural form itself implies two. So, kevan de sirim tre mashma, since the word sirim implies two, so why does the Torah tell us this word two sirim three times? Right. So the the drasha is that each time the Torah says shnei sirim, it's to make them equivalent. And why would I need it three times? I need it three times for these different aspects for its appearance, for its height, and for its value. Okay, so then what do we say? Uh, we pick the two Seirim, and then one of them died uh, after the Hagrala. So then you have to bring a new Zug for Hagrala. And you say, Im shel shem met, hachi mi parsha. This is how you explain it. Im shel shem met, yomar, yomar, ze sha'ala ala bagorala shem, yitkayem tachtav. So that was the point of the way I was showing you the way I laid out the Mishnah. <coughs> that the word, you don't, he doesn't say the words, Im shel shem met. That's just telling me, in the case where shall shame mate, these are the words that he will say. He will say, right? So what's the sheni? After you've done the new hagrala, then the second one. Just a second. Vasheni yire achi istay. Im shalazazel mate. So just to clarify, let's say it was the seir la azazel that had died from the original hagrala. Yachshav yesh kan shnaim lashem. So now I did a new hagrala. So the seir la azazel from the new hagrala is the seir la azazel because there isn't any other. And now I have a new Sir Lashem designated. So Echad Shinishar Mizug Risham, Echad Mizug Shini. I have now two Sirim Lashem, one from that 
is alive still from the first Hagrava and one that's from the new Hagrava. You can only use one for Kapara. So the second one is Yireh Achistaev. So the question is, which is the second one? Is the second one from the second Hagrava, or does it mean the second one, the second Seir from the first Hagrava? So he says, Sheni means here, this Sheni that's your Adshi Staev. It's the second one from the second Hagrala. That's the one that goes out to pasture until it gets a blemish. Mesheni shebezub rishon, hu shiikrav, im hu shel shem, o yishtalach, im hu shazazel. The first one, <coughs> you see here from the first Hagrala, is going to be the one that's used either, either as a chatat or as a sirla azazel. And the reason is because according to the Tanakama, ein ba'alei chayim nidchin. The animals, while they are alive, are not pushed away. V'im er alahen sh'at p'sul adayn yecholid lehitaken kishiz daveg lo acher. It's not pushed away because it is still alive and if it happens that it's pasul for the moment, but it could still be remedied to be used by linking it up with another one, then we, then we use it. So, because what happened in the case where you had the first Hagrava and then one of the, one of the Sirim died, the, the one that's left is pasul at that moment because it doesn't have a benzu, right? It's not, to use the words that uh, Paul mentioned before, it's not entangled with any other animal. So right now it's pasul, you can't use it for anything. However, I can do another hagrala, and then I can link it up to an animal from the second hagrala, and then it can become properly entangled again. And so, since it was the first one chosen, I don't push it away in favor of something else, as long as there's a possibility of me using it. This rule applies elsewhere. Another example of this would be, if you had a korban, if you had an animal that was designated to be a korban, and it got a mum, but it was a mum over, it had a blemish that, given time, the blemish would heal in, for halachic purposes. After it, he, after it would heal or after it would go away, the animal would once again be kosher to be brought as a korban. So there also I say, just because right now it's pasul, I don't, I don't get rid of it. I, I, I still am going to keep it in order to try to restore it to its original status as a, uh, an animal that can be brought as a korban. So it's similar here with the seir that's left from the first hagrava. I want to try to use it if I can, right? It's, a, it's only a temporary psu. Shale? Yes. Rabbi, it, I don't see from the text that Rabbi Yehuda has got any asmachta. It just claims it just out of the blue, so to say. No, so here, look, so remember also that the, that the, um, uh, the Mishnah doesn't usually bring sources, but w that's one of the reasons I mentioned the, uh, that I looked at the Mishnah in uh, Tzmura, just to show you that this machloket about whether or not Chatata Tzibur is meta or not meta, it's a machloket about the halachal on Hashem Sinai. Rabbi Yehuda had a tradition that Chatata Tzibur is meta. Chatata Tzibur shnit kapru ba'alav, ba'acher, the original Chatat is meta, for him that was halachal on Hashem Sinai. 
More than more than that, we know. So it's not the Rabbanan. No, 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 no. It's not at all the Rabbanan. All of these dinim are diraita. This is all diraita. Alachanam Hashem Sinai has a din diraita, and this and that, and we see that this is the sheet of Rabbi Yehuda that. <clears throat> uh, well, two things. Uh, let's let's look at the let's look at the rest of the Bar Tzinura. Shein chatat zibur meita, right? So the sheni is yirei atchis te'ev because ein chatat zibur meita. The chig gemire chataot meita because when we learn gemire in the sense of the gemire of the halachah of Hashem Sinai, when we learned it as a tradition that chatot are meitot, meaning again. A chatat shenit kapru ba'alav ba'acher, right? A chatat that had been chosen, it was lost. The the uh, the ba'alim chose another chatat, were mit kaper with another chatat, and then they found the first one. Chatot meitot biachid gemire. The halacha of Hashem is is that a chatat hayachid is meita. And obviously, the Sirim of Yom Kippurim don't have a din of Chatat Hayachid, they're Chatat Tzibur. And there it's, it's very explicit. You have to take that, you have to buy them with money that was donated by the entire Tzibur. So they're Chatat Tzibur. The Chatat Meita, who Shemachnisinot Hamabait Echad Aminichinot Hosham Achitamut. He, he explains what we know. This is this is what this is the din of the Chatat Meita. And Rabbi Yehuda disagrees, and he says, "No, it's also Meita." But Odama Rabbi Yehuda Nishpach Adam Shel Seir Shel Hashem Yamuta Nishtoreach. Similarly, he says, if the blood was spilled of the Sir Vashem, which you brought as Chatat, and the blood was spilled before you finished doing the, uh, the sprinklings that you need to do with its blood, then Yamut HaMishtaleach. The, it's Ben Zug, the Mishtaleach is Yamut. The Halo Itavid Mitzvah Dedam, because the mitzvah of dam was not accomplished with the blood from the korban chatat. All of the service that was done that day in the white clothing of the Kohen Gadol for Yom Kippurim, whether it was inside the Kodesh HaKodeshim, or inside, or Bachutz, outside in the Echal, uh, is the outside. The Torah calls it a chukah, and when it says chukah, the understanding is it's a cave. Every aspect of that avodah holds back the entire procedure. It's a rich lavi dam acher, so then you have to bring other blood if the blood was spilled before you finished. It's impossible to bring more blood except by doing another hagrala, picking two more si'irim. And Rabbi Yehuda, unlike the Tanakama, he doesn't hold by this idea that ba'alei chayim enan nidchin, he says, no, Balei Chaim Nidchim. It's if I have an animal that had been Raui to be a Korban, and now at this moment it's Pasul, even if I can possibly rectify that situation, I don't. I say that Bal Chaim is Nidche. It's pushed away from its original uh, status, and I'll bring another one in its place. So here, nishpach hadam. So what? What's the problem? I well. What, so what happened? I had the hagrala. I have a sir mishtalech that's waiting until the blood from the sir chatat is completely uh, sprinkled. 
but that doesn't get completed. And now it cannot be completed except by doing another hagrala and bringing another, picking another two animals. Once I have to go to the, Rabbi Huda is saying, once I have to go to that and I have to pick another two animals, the first animal, the Sira Mishtarech from the first Hagrada is Nidche. Now it's been pushed away from its original task and there's nothing to do with it except uh, Tamut. It's going to, I have to let it die because now it's like, it's, it becomes like a Chatat Shnitkapru Ba'alav Ba'acher, right? The Chatat Acher. Yamut HaMishtalech HaRishon. And what's the last part? Meit HaMishtalech. Lodomar Rabbi Yehud, Nishbach Adam Yamut HaMishtalech. Meit HaMishtalech Yishafech Adam. Meit HaMishtalech. Af al gav deshiluach lo ma'akei v'divrei hakol. And this is something we'll talk about more as we get uh, further into the chapter. It turns out that sending off the Sir Lazazel until it falls off a cliff and dies, that's actually not ma'akev. It doesn't, it's not something that absolutely has to happen in order to get kapara. Everybody agrees that Shiluach is not ma'akev. Right, so he just mentioned, the Torah says that it's chuka. What's chuka? That, what's, what's considered to be a chuka? What's considered to be a statute that implies that if you don't do it, it holds up the kapara, it holds up the procedure, it holds up the kapara. That's only applicable to the avodot that the Kohen Gadol himself did in Bidei Lavan. And of course, he isn't the one that takes the Sira Mishtalayat and pushes it off the cliff. So, right, the Kichtiv Chuka, La'akev, when the Torah wrote the word Chuka, meaning La'akev, it was only refers to things that the Kohen does in the white clothing. That which is done by in the hands of the Ish Iti, the person who's going to take the Sir Lazazel, that's it's what he does is not ma'akev. Nonetheless, none so in other words, so it, so let's stop for a moment. So now we know this. We know that actually pushing the Sir Lazazel off the cliff is not ma'akev. So if I said, if I say, I'm saying that even though I shouldn't care that the mishtaleach died, because I don't really care how the mishtaleach dies. It doesn't, it's not essential that the Sierra Mishtalech was taken out and pushed off of a cliff. But nonetheless, Rebuna says, Yishafech Adam. So why does he say Yishafech Adam? <clears throat> In other words, implying that now that this, the Sierra Mishtalech has died, I, the, the procedure that I'm doing with the Sierra Lashem is going to be invalid. So I have to, I just pour out the blood and I start all over again. But why pour out the blood and start all over again? I don't, why should I care? Because even though the Seir uh, HaMishtalech does not affect atonement, um, it is still entangled with the um, Seir designated for, for, for Hashem. And so, therefore, that, therefore, it's, it's therefore, therefore, the seer that's taken for Hashem is invalid if the go for Azazel, Azazel is not driven off the cliff. Very good. So this is what he says. Nonetheless, we learn from the pasuk diktiv ya'amod chay. This is about the seer hamishtarech that it says it has to stand alive lifnei Hashem lechaper alav. So what's the drasha 
Until when does the Sir Mishterech have to stand alive? Ad Sha'at Matan Damo Shochavero. Until the time of, that the blood of its, of its companion, of its entangled companion, is given. Ha imet kodem lachem. Ergo, if it died before the blood of the of the Sir Lashem was completely given, ein kapara tadam klum. Then the kapara that we'll get from the dam is 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 nothing. In other words, once again, if the Sir Hamishtalech now dies before the blood of the Sir Chatat is given, it's as if the the Sir Chatat enenu and, and the blood is enenu. It doesn't. It, in other words, it's, it's as if it's not there anymore. It doesn't have any tokef. So therefore, they need to be uh, replaced in this in this regard. And you can't do that without doing another hagrala. I means I can't repl- I can't now bring a sir Lashem without doing another hagrala. And I need to have both of them too. The first one will be pushed away. Because everybody agrees that shchutim will be pushed away. In other words, when do I say that? Uh, I say baalei chayim. According to Rabbi, according to the Tanakama, baalei chayim are not nidchim. That's because they're still alive. When you when a psul befalls an animal while it's still alive, but it's a psul that can be rectified. So that's when the Tanakama holds that uh, it's not nitche. But if the animal's already been shechted, then it's nitche. So I can't, I can't, uh, I can't simply bring another sir mishtaleach, and I can't use the blood from the first chatat because I'm going to have to bring two new animals, and the first sir chatat is is shachut. In other words, it is nidcha mimela because it's dead. That's what he means. Even though the blood is still arguably kosher, right? It's it's kosher blood, even though the sir mishtalech died. But it's effectively not kosher. It's effectively pasul because, to use the language that we've been using, it's became disentangled because it's not, it doesn't have a ben zug. It doesn't. It's a zug died. Okay, so this took a little bit longer than I thought, but I think this is a little bit clearer than last time. At least I hope it was. Next time, let's go on and. Beginning with Mishnah Bet um, is when we're going to go back to the uh, we're going to go back to the order of what was actually taking place in Beit, in, in the Beit Hamikdash. The whole Mishnah Aleph was just this it was a parenthetical, but but immediately relevant discussion that discussed. The, the two si'irim, even though one of the si'irim we already shechted in the previous chapter, right? So now beginning in Mishnah Bet, we're going to go to the second si'ir, to the si'ir Mishtalech, and we'll examine the din of the si'ir Mishtalech. So that's it for today. Any last questions or comments? No? Okay. So this worked out for Wednesday. I'll see you, God willing, next Wednesday. Yep. All right. Good night. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.